been a long time since the 80 teams been together, and uh, we'll come out. Some of us will be out of shape, some of us will be in shape, but we'll work hard, we'll put on a good show. I think that the Louisville community will enjoy this game, but I'm here to say as a testimony that the 80 team shall be victorious. <laughs> I must remind you, uh, this is not, this won't be the first time we have really got together and played. Uh, we wax them over Crawford Gym every summer. <laughs> and I don't see why we can, we're not going to do it again the 23rd. <laughs> well, we'll have to find out. We'll have to wait and see, you know. Um, one of my favorite musicians was Marvin Gaye. And uh, if you guys like to know, one of his favorite songs was Let's Get It On. And, uh, We'll see June 23rd. You guys can bring all that trash to the court. Hello from Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky. Tonight, it's a dream game of sorts, a summertime exhibition game between the 1980 NCAA champion Louisville Cardinals versus the 1986 NCAA champion Louisville Cardinals. And now, introducing the teams. First, the 
from Indianapolis, Indiana, lettered from 1978 through 1981. Recorded as one of the best six men in college basketball during the 1979-80 season. Roger Curry, the nickname of Instant Defense, scored a career-high 19 points against St. Louis when he hit 13 of 14 free throws while dishing out five assists. Finished the 1979-80 season with the second most assists, 113. Roger Berkman.
the rosters of both the Team 80 and Team 86. And we're ready for the tip-off, the Battle of the Champions here at Freedom Hall. The 1980 team is in the white, the 1986 team is in the red. The starting lineup for the 86 team, Purvis Ellison, Billy Thompson, Milt Wagner, Herb Crook, and Jeff Hall. The white team, Team 1980, Jerry Eves and Daryl Griffith at the guard, Scooter McRae, Rodney McRae, and Wiley Brown on the front line. And here we go, set to play the battle of the champions. Team 86 wins the tip. This is Jeff Hall, guarded by Eves. Purvis Ellison. Billy Thompson inside. And here comes the 1980 champions. Scooter McRae to Rodney. That's Wiley. He's got it. Wiley Brown with the outside jumper puts Team 80 on top, 2-0. Jeff Hall to Herb Crook, top of the key. Ellison, that's short. Rebound Wiley Brown. Here comes Team 80. Griffith, Eves. Scooter, that's Griff for three-point land, no good. Team 86 on the move, looking for their first points of the game. Milt Wagner, the Ellison, he's got it. We're tied at two. Purvis Ellison, now with the Sacramento Kings in the NBA. Scooter, bounce pass inside to the Griff, and he's fouled. Team first. 
Let's set the lineup for you again now. For the white team, Team 1980, Jerry Eves and Daryl Griffith at the guard, Scooter McRae, Rodney McRae, and Wiley Brown on the front line. For Team 86, Jeff Hall, Milt Wagner at guard, Billy Thompson and Herb Crook at forward, and Purvis Ellison in the middle for Team 86. So Griff gets one free throw, and Team 80 leads 3-2. Griffith from way outside. Yes, three-pointer. 6-2. The 1980 champions in front. Team 86 comes out cold in this one. Cross court pass, almost lost, but Jerry Eves gets it back. And the 1980 champions will set the offense. Wiley Brown, that's short. 6 2. Team 80 in front. Ellison, yes. <laughs> Purvis with all four points for Team 86, 6-4. Six, Team 80 leads by a basket. Wally Brown in the paint. Oh, that's sweet. Nice move by Wiley. He's got four, 8-4. Team 80 leads it. And here comes Team 80 on the move. Three on two fast break. Griffith, what a pass to Eves, draws the foul. We'll play four 10-minute quarters tonight, and we'll be going by NBA rules. And for this first two minutes and 45 seconds, the 1980 team has outplayed the 86 champions. Jerry Eves, his first point of the game. He can give Team 80 a six-point advantage if he makes this one. Nope, looks like we're gonna have a lane violation on Purvis and we'll shoot it again. So everything's going uh, very well for Coach Jerry Jones, 1980 Cardinal Champions right now. And it's 10-4. Here comes the Iceman, Milt Wagner. Guarded by Griffith. Hall to Purvis. That's short off the front. Another three on two opportunity for Team 80. This is Jerry Eves. He takes it up and he's fouled. Come on, Billy! Very, very strong crowd on hand for this Battle of the Champions tonight at Freedom Hall. Looks like about 15,000 in attendance. So Jerry Eves goes back to the line. Try to extend that lead for the 1980 champions. So Jerry a little off on the free throw shooting here in the first three minutes of the first quarter, but nevertheless, Team 80 enjoys a six point lead. And it goes to seven. 11 to four, team 80 in front. This is Crook. Back to Ellison. He's been their bread and butter so far. Won't go. Another run out by the 80 champions. Eves to Wiley Brown. Wiley Brown with six points. 13 to four. And the old timers, they call them, the team from 1980, in front by nine. Oh, a little push off there by Billy Thompson. Thirteen to four, six minutes, 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Team 80 in front. And Roger Berkman has come into the game for Jerry Eves. For the Whites, the champions of the 1980 NCAA tournament. This is Griffith. Not there. Milt Wagner, three on two. DeCrook. 
will not go. Rodney McRae to Brother Scooter. Back to Rodney. Oh, hook. 15 to 4, and right now, the team from 1980 is dominating the game with 5.55 to go in the first quarter. They've run the fast break to perfection so far. Herb Crook. His first two points, 15 to 6. The 1980 Cardinals enjoy the lead. Berkman's shot is off the mark. Bounce pass. Milt Wagner to Purvis Ellison. He draws the foul. So at the start of this game, much of the uh, pregame talk was with the 1980 team, uh, being the, uh, the older players that they are, would they be able to mount a challenge against the younger 86 team, especially since the fact that Derek Smith is not playing tonight. But so far, the team from 1980 has uh, dominated things as Purvis Ellison missed the, misses the first of two free throws. The 86 team about to make a few changes as Ellison hits the second. Purvis Ellison with five points, 15 to seven, an eight point advantage for the 1980 Cardinals. That's Griffith and he is way out. And Herb Crook looks up court for some help as team 86 will try to narrow this advantage. Jeff Hall. All right, Jeff Hall. The Pancho right on the baseline. All right, right. And a steal and Scooter lays it in. 19 to nine, a 10 point lead for the white team the 1980 champions. Crook is short. Here come the Whites. Griffith behind the back. Oh! Griff draws the foul. We're going to get our first uh, timeout of this ball game with four minutes, 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Team 80 with a 10-point lead over Team 86, 19 to 9. Team 86 has brought in five new players. We have Chris West and Kevin Walls at guard, Kenny Payne, Tony Kimbrough, and Mark McSwain in for the 1986 NCAA champion Louisville Cardinals. Griffith at the line. So many changes now for Coach Wade Houston's team as Griffith hits the second free throw. 20 to nine, an 11 point advantage for the team from 1980. This is Kenny Payne up top. Kimbrough's shot is blocked. Knocked out of bounds by Griffith. This is Kimbrough from the corner. Air ball. Berkman. He has a little trouble. It's loose. And it'll stay with the uh, 1980 champions. We've got Wiley Brown, Daryl Griffith, Scooter McRae, Poncho Wright, and Roger Berkman in the white jerseys. Griffith. Seven points for Griff, 22 to nine. Mark McSwain. Mark McSwain. So we'll see if this new team for the 86 squad can maybe provide some sort of spark, cut into this lead. That's an easy one for Griffith. 
He's got nine. 24 to 11. Griffin Company in front. This is Payne, with, guarded by Pancho Wright. Another rebound for Wiley Brown. Berkman. Kevin Walls back to Chris West. He's got it. Three minutes to go in this first quarter. The Battle of the Champions from Freedom Hall. Griffith will try it again. He is sharp tonight in this first quarter. 26-13, a 13-point advantage for what was considered to be an underdog 1980 team. 86 team has been cold in this first quarter. Scooter McRae with a block, and it's Wiley Brown with another rebound. Big, big effort by the 80 champions so far. A miss by Griff. The Red Squad from 86. Payne. Oh, 26-15. Team 80 in front of Team 86. 153 to play in this first quarter. It's a steal. Questionable call right there. Several changes now for the uh, 1980 champions. Roddy McRae is back in. We got Daryl Cleveland, Jerry Eaves, Tony Branch. Wiley Brown remains in for the 1980 NCAA champions. Rodney. Remember, we're using the NBA three-point line tonight. This is Eves. Soft touch. 30 to 15. They've doubled it up on the 86 squad. Kimbrough. Payne tries it, but it looks like we're going to be, Payne's going to be reaching in there. 15-point advantage for the 1980 champions. Big surprise here. Wiley, it's blocked. 86 team throws it away. Three on one, Eves. Oh, he's hammered. Tony Branch with a nice return pass there, and Jerry Eves will go back to the foul line. Jerry Eves, the quarterback of that first championship team for the University of Louisville. He has six points. He's looking for number seven. Right on the mark, 32-15. It's a 17-point advantage. Team 86 has dug themselves quite a hole in this first quarter with 30 seconds to play. This is Payne. Chris West will put it up. He's two for two. Uh, 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. The team from 1980 in front of the 86 team, 32 to 17. Six seconds on the clock. Rodney will put it up. He's got it, three-pointer. What a way to close out the first quarter. And a very big surprise here at Freedom Hall. The team from 1980 
leading the team from 86, 35 to 17 at the end of the first quarter. Okay, ready to start the second period of this Battle of the Champions, and so far, the uh, 86 team has not put up much of a battle. They trail the 1980 champions 35 to 17 as we begin the second quarter. Griffith, a living legend, leading the white team with 11 points in that quarter. Purvis Ellison led the 86 squad with five points. Eves and Tony Branch, Rodney McRae, Wiley Brown, and Daryl Griffith. In for the 1980 team. They have the ball. They're in the white jerseys. And Griffith draws the foul. The fouls on Billy Thompson, number 55, his second team. For the 1986 NCAA champion, Louisville Cardinals, we've got Keith Williams, Mike Abram, Herb Crook, Billy Thompson, and Purvis Ellison as they try to find some kind of combination to get them back in this game. Darrell Griffith for his 12th point of the game, 36-17, a big 19-point advantage for Griffith and company. Billy Thompson picks up the foul inside. No basket. No ball. He falls on Rodney McRae, number 22, his second team second. Mike Abram ready to inbound the ball. We've got a little push off here. Keith Williams and Tony Branch. A little bad blood here in the second quarter. Turnover. I think you saw right there that these teams uh, want to win this game. 36-17, white team in front and with the basketball. Mike Abram with a steal. Billy Thompson will step in. Offensive charge, Thompson. That's the third personal on Billy Thompson. with nine minutes and 18 seconds to go in the second quarter. Rodney McRae guarded by Thompson to Tony Branch. Back to Eaves. One on one, Jerry Eaves draws the foul. Greg Deucer in the game for the 80 champions now. Tony Branch will take a seat. And Jerry Eves has made a living at this free throw line here in this the first in the first and second quarters. He gets the first. Eight points for Jerry Eves. And it's a 20 point advantage for the 1980 squad. Make it 21. Thirty-eight, seventeen, eighty-six. Team looking for some spark. Williams is off the mark, and here comes Griffith. Gets through the crowd, through the traffic, down the lane, blocked by Purvis. He's for three. Yes. He's with a dozen. 41-17 now. The team from 1980 threatening to put this one out of reach. And we still have eight minutes and 23 seconds to play in the second quarter. Williams guarded by Greg Deucer. This is Billy Thompson. His first, first basket of the game for Billy. Roddy McRae. Eaves again. He's hot.
Wilson. No. Again. Foul. Big effort from Ellison that time. Forty-three to nineteen. Team eighty is really put it to the eighty-six champs. And Purvis gets them both. He's got seven for the game now. Craig Deucer. Griffith. Another foul against Team 86. It's the, the Battle of Champions from Freedom Hall. Scooter McRae replaces Jerry Eves, who really, really gave the white team, the 80 champions, a big, big lift. 14 points. Jerry Eves, the leading scorer thus far. And again, Team 80 back at the free throw line. Griff gets them both. Now he has 14. And it's a 24 point advantage for the 80 champions. Ellison. <laughs> Griffith off the mark and Keith Williams now. Out of bounds to Team 86. Seven minutes to play until halftime. Billy Thompson will inbound. Abram up the front of the rim. Another three on two opportunity now. Griffith with the stay, but Purvis has the steal. And the red team has the numbers. Offensive charge, Purvis Ellison. So it's another free throw opportunity now for the 1980 champions. And Wagner, Payne, and Chris West come back in for the 86 team. 86 team in the red. The 80 team wearing the white tops. Scooter gets it. Scooter McRae. 47 23 very very impressive showing by the 80 champions this is Milt Wagner spin two different calls here one a jump ball one a foul That's the second foul on Daryl Griffith. Of course, Milt Wagner hit plenty of clutch free throws down the stretch during his career as a Cardinal. Many, many crucial free throws that he made. And the game for the squad, number 34, Roger Berkman. And Dave Mason Berkman comes in for Deucer.
Wagner now with two points. 47-25. Team 80 in command. Scooter down the lane. Iceman, the Iceman gets a steal and a foul will go against Team 80. Three fouls on Griffith. Kenny Payne is off. Griffith with the board. 86 team only getting one shot down the at their end of the floor. Poncho right. He'll pop it. Kenny Payne. We're going to get a timeout. 5.36 remaining in the second quarter. 47 to 27. Team 80 up by 20. Five minutes, 38 seconds to go in this uh, second quarter. A 20-point advantage by Team 1980. Berkman loses the ball. And Payne will pop it. Well, this 80 team really seems to be in, in really great shape. That's Griffith. He can't get it to go. Milt Wagner draws the charge, draws the foul on Roger Berkman. Crowd not very pleased with that call by the official. The 1986 champions in red will put the ball in play under their basket. Kenny Payne looking for help. This is Milt Wagner for three off the front. All those shots seems to be off the front of the rim for the 86 squad. Berkman. Gets the floater. That's two points for Roger Berkman. 49 to 27. Team 86 is in trouble right now. Billy Thompson is fouled. Billy Thompson has scored two points. He'll try for two more here at the foul line. Four minutes, 50 seconds to play until halftime. Again, a reminder tonight, we are playing with NBA rules, so the black three-point line is for college, and the white three-point line is what we will use tonight. Number 42, Jeff Hall. And here is Jeff Hall back in the game for the Red Squad from 86. Chris West, West will take a seat. Thompson misses both foul shots. That's the way it's been this, this first half for his team. Scooter will work on Purvis. Berkman's got Rodney. Griff tracks it down. A little long on that one. Poncho right in trouble on the baseline, and he picks up the foul. Milt Wagner having some trouble against Roger Berkman. <laughs> Jeff Hall. Shooting percentage way, way down here for the team from 86. This is Poncho Wright. He was wrong on that shot. 
Mark McSwain. And he's fouled. Three minutes, 53 seconds to play in this second quarter. The 1980 NCAA champions, 49. The 86 NCAA champions, 29. So Jerry Eves with 14 replaces Roger Berkman. And so far, Eves has been the surprise of this game. Appears to be in great shape. He scored 14 points. McSwain caps off the three-point play. He's got five. And it's a 19-point advantage for Jerry Eves and company. Hall gets the steal. This ought to be easy. Kenny Payne cuts the lead to 17. Daryl Griffith. Nice shot by Kenny Payne. Fifty-one thirty-four. the 80 squad in front. Jerry Eves. Nice defense by Griffith. This is Wiley Brown. Eight points for Wiley. 53-34. It's back up to 19. Purvis. Another defensive rebound by the White Squad. Eighty-six team on the move. Milt. Nice layup. Back to a seventeen point advantage. That's going to be against Milt, Wa Milt Wagner fouling Griff. And Billy Thompson and Herb Crook in for the 80 squad. Rodney McRae returns to the 80 lineup. Two minutes, 10 seconds to go until the intermission. And double zero. Robbie Valentine makes his first appearance tonight. And we will have one for the 1986 NCAA Kings. Another free throw by Griffith. Daryl Griffith with 17 going for another free throw. Here comes Robbie Valentine. Let's see if he can pump some life into this 86 squad. They trail now by 18. Scooter with the rebound and another fast break. Chance, there's Griffith down the lane. He's fouled. That'll be on Billy Thompson. That's number four on Thompson. He's in trouble. So far, the, the, the bottom line is Daryl Griffith and Jerry Eves have simply taken control of the game. So Billy Thompson will sit down with four personals. No one from the uh, Red Squad, the 86 team, has been able to slow down Griff. Who now has 19. This is Valentine. Fifty-six, thirty-eight, Team 80 on top of Team 86. 124 to play in the second quarter. Eves. 
inside to Scooter McRae. This is Valentine to Crook. Ellison. Fifty-six forty. Team eighty with a sixteen-point lead. Forty-eight seconds to go until halftime. Let's see if this red squad can make up some kind of make up a little bit of the difference here in the final minute. Nice save by Crook. McSwain. Eves comes up with it. Three on one. Eves. Griffith. Wiley Brown. <laughs> So the 80 team misses out on a super opportunity there. The 86 squad a little, a little bit of fire right there. 21 seconds to go until halftime. So the red squad, the 86 champions have uh, have rallied a bit here in the last couple of minutes. But they still trail by 16 points in a surprising first half effort by the 1980 NCAA champions led by Jerry Eves and Daryl Griffith in this first 20 minutes. Jeff Hall at the line for the 86 squad. And Jeff Hall cuts that lead to 14. And the game on the red squad, Mike Abel, number 34, professor Jeff Hall. 21 seconds to go before halftime. 56-42. Team 80 in the white jerseys with the ball, with the lead. And you figure they'll go for one shot here. Griffith guarded by Mike Abram. Six seconds. Griffith for three. No. That's Ellison with the rebound. Two seconds. One second. McSwain will put it up. That was close. So a, a bit of a spark at the end of the half by the 86 squad, but they still trail 56-42. Team 80 in command. Jerry E's with 14 points. Daryl Griffith with 19, and that's the big reason why Team 80 leads 56-42 over Team 86 after two quarters. A standing ovation for head coach Jenny Crum. Here's Daryl Griffith of the 1980 champions. I'd like to say on behalf of the two national championship teams, you coach, the fans. <laughs> I think it's a shame that a man who brings the two national championships, four final fours in 1980, and never gets coach of the year. emotional statement from Daryl Griffith about his former coach Denny Crum. I know to you as they do to me. And 
I know it's uh, some great memories watching these guys play. I, I wasn't sure what kind of shape some of them were in, but it looks to me like they, they've been doing some working out. So uh, it's great to be here and be a part of this. And I know you feel the same. It's the players that really count, and I'm happy to see such a great turnout for these charities. Thank you very much. So we're about ready for the beginning of the third quarter of this Battle of the Champions, the 1980 U of L champions against the 86 Titleist. 56-42, a 14-point advantage for Team 80. Team 80 in white and the team in red, the 86 champions will have the ball here at the start of the third quarter. This is Kenny Payne. Ellison. He had 11 points at the half. He now has 13. 56-44. The white team, the 1980 champions, up by a dozen. Red team with the numbers. The Iceman to Purvis. It's down to 10. That's as close as they've been. The 86 team has been in a long, long time. This is Wiley Brown. Air ball. We'll set the lineups for you now. For the 1980 team, Jerry Eves, Daryl Griffith, Wiley Brown, Rodney McCray, and Scooter McCray. Kenny Payne, Milt Wagner for the 86 squad, along with Billy Thompson, Herb Crook, and Purvis Ellison. Tip is by Payne, knocked out. Jerry Eves. Kenny Payne to the hoop. And the foul. Team 86 dug quite a hole for themselves in that first half, and we'll see if they can slowly climb back. This is Kenny Payne. Now with the Philadelphia 76ers. Nine points, and that stays nine points now for Payne. 56-47, Team 80 in front. Wiley Brown backing in on Crook. Rodney. <laughs> Team 80 by 11. Here comes Griffith. Scooter. It's back to a 13 point advantage. Push off by Purvis. We'll go the other way. Three fouls on Ellison, who is, uh, in a few months, will begin his second season. The Sacramento Kings. Scooter. Off the mark. Billy T has it for Team 86. Will not fall. Thompson with only two points so far. What a pass. What a play. That's right out of the textbook. Mark McSwain and Jeff Hall check back into the 86 lineup. So just when Team 86 was beginning to show some life, 
Rodney McRae could be at the end of a three point play here for the 1980 NCAA champions. He's got it. McRae now with a dozen 63 47. McSwain. Got it. Griff pulls up. Air ball. The 1986 champs in the red jerseys. The 1980 champions in the white jerseys. McSwain. Purvis. Ball goes over to Team 80. And Jerry Eves, who had 14 in the first half, working on Milt Wagner. Ball belongs to the red team. Six forty four to go in the third quarter. Wagner working on Griffith on the baseline. And McSwain will draw the foul. Roger Berkman will check back in when Jerry Eves checks out. McSwain hits the first free throw. He's got eight points. And the lead is 13, 63 to 50. Berkman blocked by McSwain. Jeff Hall. Ellison. 17 for Purvis Ellison, 63 52. 86 team now trailing by 11. There's Griffith again. Team 80 was up 14 at the break. They're up 13 now. As Billy Thompson draws the foul. The foul is on Rock McCray, number 22, is third, team third. Billy Thompson puts it down. That's only his second basket thus far, but it does cut the lead to 11, 65, 54. Scooter, Mc Scooter McRae picks up the foul. That is number four on Purvis Ellison. The Wiley Brown takes a seat. Poncho Wright, number 44, checks in for the Whites. Scooter now with seven. He banks it down. <laughs> Eight points for Scooter McRae. 67-54. Team 80 in front. A surprising effort tonight by the 80 team. Ellison and McSwain tip it back and forth, but Griffith comes away with it. Berkman. Rodney. There's a steal by Jeff Hall. He's got... Wagner, but Hall will pull up and hit it. Uh, 
Lead is 11. 67-56. Jeff Hall in the 86 squad. Down 11. Griffith misses. Poncho Wright tries to scoop. It's not there. And Milt Wagner draws the foul from Roger Berkman. Four thirty-two to play in the third quarter. The Battle of the Champions. Summertime exhibition game between two NCAA championship teams. It happened in Indianapolis. Daryl Griffith and the Cardinals winning U of L's first championship. Then in Dallas, Purvis Ellison, Billy Thompson and company. Scoring the second national crown for Coach Denny Crum. He calls on Roger Berkman, number 34, his third team on the fifth. So Berkman picks up a couple of quick fouls since he re entered the game. And the 1986 champions will inbound the ball. Ellison to Milt Wagner. An easy deuce for the 86 team, 67-58. It's down to nine. Griffith guarded by Jeff Hall. He gets it to go. 23 points, a game high, 23 for Griffith. There's Wiley Brown. Roger Berkman. Uh-oh. Three on one. Purvis. We're going to get a timeout here. Team 86, working their way back into it. 3.22 to go in the third, 69-60. Team 80 in front. 3.22 to go in the third period, and the 86 champions have uh, made up a little bit of ground here in the third quarter. They trail by nine. This is Griffith double teamed into Wiley Brown. Loose ball. Boy, Wiley put it back in. Wiley has a has 10 points 71 60 11 point advantage for the white team Ellison count it Purvis has been the man tonight for the red team got 21 chance for the three point play chance to cut the lead to eight. Twenty-two points for Purvis, 71-63, an eight-point lead. It was 14. Team 80 up by 14 at the break. Oh, what a move there by Griffith. The guard for the Utah Jazz, Griff, now with 25 points. That's a game high. Rodney McRae slows it up. Whistle on the floor. We have a wet spot. Two minutes, 24 seconds to go. In this third stanza. The 1980 champions lead it by 10. 73-63. Berkman, Ro Rodney McRae, Wiley Brown, Daryl Griffith, Poncho Wright. In the game for the 80 squad. Berkman looking. Kicks it off. Draws the foul. The foul is on Bill Wecker, number 20. His fourth team fourth. For the 86 champs, David Robinson is in the game with Billy Thompson, Purvis Ellison, Chris West, and Milt Wagner in the backcourt. Number 23, he replaces Roger Berkman, number 34. That was the 14th 
Tony Branch replaces Roger Berkman for the 80 team. Loose ball. Branch tracks it down. Steal. Purvis knocked it loose. Wagner. To West. No. Still loose. And the 86 team will keep it. Billy Thompson looks to inbounds. Wagner drives on Daryl Griffith. Cuts the lead to eight, 73-65, 130 to go in the third. Dr. D. Oh. Bombs away. Twenty-eight for Griffith. Ellison can't get it. Rodney has it. A chance on the run out. Griffith. Griffith hustles and gets it back. No, that's Branch. Branch with the rebound. Pancho. Six points for Pancho. Lead back to 13, 78-65, 36 seconds to go in the third. Purvis steps under. <laughs> 22 seconds to go in the third, 78-67. Team 80, looks like they're gonna pull it out. They're gonna hold it down for one shot. 10 seconds. Seven. This is Griffith. Two seconds to go, so. 86 squad has two ticks to make something happen here. Will Olage is in the game for the first time. He'll make the long, uh, Heave here for the 86 squad. Purvis will take a rest. Let's see what the red squad can do here. Wagner. Short. Well, Team 80 led by 14 at intermission. The lead is now 11 after three quarters, 78 to 67. Ready to start the final quarter of this Battle of the Champions. Team 80 leads Team 86 by 11, 78, 67. Surprising effort tonight by the, uh, the veterans, the old timers, as Griffith knocks down his 29th and 30th point. Thompson. Six points for Billy T, 80 to 69. Jerry Eves, Daryl Griffith in the backcourt for the 1980 champions, along with the baseline of Poncho Wright, Scooter McRae, and Wiley Brown. Sweet move. Oh, it kicks out for Wiley. Milt Wagner draws the foul. Jerry Eves did the smart thing right there. As Team 86 really had the numbers. Team 86 begins this period with Milt Wagner and Chris West as the guards. Mark McSwain, Billy Thompson, Will Olages on the baseline. And just as we reset it, Abram replaces Chris West. Milt at the line. He's got nine points.
Give him 10. 80 71, nine point lead for Team 80. Jerry Eves brings it up. Team 80 in the white, Team 86 in the red. They two time Griffith, but the 86 squad commits the foul. The foul is on Mark McSwain, number 10, is first, Team 5th. Only the fifth team foul against the Red, so Scooter McRae tosses inbound. Griffith is wide open underneath, and he's is hammered there. Griffith has been the one player in this game that has really, really been tough to contain. And there he is, back at the foul line, trying to extend the nine-point advantage for his team. He has struggled a bit at the foul line tonight. Nevertheless, he has give him 31 for the game. And 81-71. Foul goes against Team 80. Eight forty-seven to go in this final quarter. Battle of the Champions at Freedom Hall. Very, very large crowd tonight for this exhibition game. Looks like around right around sixteen thousand in attendance. As Billy Thompson misses the foul shot, but it's McSwain who gets it to go down, and he's fouled. Another foul against Scooter. That's his fourth personal. So Rodney comes in for Poncho. Three-point play, and the lead is seven. McSwain has scored 11. Here's the press. Eves better hurry. He gets it across the line. He's still in trouble, and he's got to call timeout. 86 team puts up a stand there. 8.31 to go in the game. It's 81-74. The 1980 champions still in front. The 1980 national champion, Louisville Cardinals, will inbound the ball. This is Jerry Eves with a scoop. It will not go, but there's Scooter. Scooter McRae now with 10. 83-74, nine-point lead for the 80 champs. Payne shot off the front of the rim. It's three on two. Eves picks up the foul. He was hammered. The foul is on number 10, Mark McSwain, his second. So Eves and Griffith, former teammates here at Louisville, former teammates in Utah with the Jazz when Jerry was playing in the NBA. And Eves and Griffith. Certainly provided the big offensive punch tonight for the 80 champions. Eves with 15. Griffith has scored 31. And the team in red, the 86 champions, will try to cut into this 10-point deficit. And Purvis... Looks like he took a finger in the face. Right in the eye. In the game for the White Squad, Tony French, number 23, replaces Jerry Eames, number 5. 748 to play here at Freedom Hall. And you may still get your programs, posters, t-shirts, caps, and championship records of the 80 and 86 teams. All the super for free. And the boost will remain open after the game. Team 86 tosses it in. This is Milt Wagner. 
Mike Abram. Three pointer for Mill. Yes. Eighty four. Seventy seven. Seven point lead for the 80 champions. Wiley Brown knocked away by Abram. This is as close as the 86 team has been since the opening couple of minutes. <laughs> Tony Branch guarded by Milt Wagner. Well, that was Griffith. Griffith with the miss there. Abram runs it down. Ellison. And the lead is five, 84 79. And the 80 squad wants to talk it over. The younger 86 team is back in it with 7 11 to go. 84 79. Team 80 still in front. So there was no timeout there. A technical foul called against Wiley Brown, and Milt Wagner cuts the lead to four. A bit of a controversy there. Long discussion between the officials and members of the 80 team. And a halftime lead that was 14 has been sliced to four with 7-11 to go in the game. Let's set the lineup for you for the 86 champions. Milt Wagner, Mike Abram at guard, and the baseline, McSwain, Ellison, and Billy Thompson. For the 80 team, it's Tony Branch and Griffith at guard, Rodney and Scooter and Wiley Brown. In the back, in the front court. So, with a technical foul, the team 86 team with another chance. Ali to Thompson, he's got it. The play of the game, right there, 84-82. What a pass by Milt Wagner. Loose ball, Ellison's got it. Here comes Cook to Wagner. Give the assist to Billy Thompson. We're tied at 84. 6.32 to go. Foul, Purvis Ellison. That's number five. with the NBA rules of course we're getting six fouls tonight but he becomes the first player in very very serious foul trouble with six minutes plus to go Wiley Brown Ellison saves it we are tied 84 84 Thompson against Rodney McRae. Throws it away. And I'll tell you, this battle of champions has really become a battle and a struggle here as the 86 champions have battled back Lead was in the 20s in the first half. Griffith picks up the foul from Milt Wagner. Can the younger players from the 86 squad, can they get their second win and take control of this game in the final six minutes? The 80 team has played a superb game. Griffith with 32 points. He leads everybody. 33. 86-84, two-point lead for Team 80. 
Milt Wagner steps in. Steele, Griffith. They've got the numbers. Scooter blocked, but a foul. And so Billy Thompson picks up foul number five. This was touted as a dream matchup, and that's what it's become here with 5.46 to go. Scooter has a dozen points. 88-84. The 80 champs. Lead it. This is Jeff Hall. McSwain. Jeff Hall. Thompson. Back strong. He's fouled. It has flat out become an all-out war under the basket, especially with Rodney and Billy going at it. Throw in Ellison and Wiley Brown. And we've got a physical struggle under the hoop. Billy Thompson, who of course now plays a starting role for the Miami Heat in the NBA, gets one of the free throws. He's got nine. Lead is three, 88-85. Griffith for three. Rodney. Five point advantage for the 80 NCAA champions. Back to three. McSwain has 13 for the 86 team. Ball knocked out of Griffith's hands. Nice defense. 90-87. 4.50 to play. Rodney's got Berkman. Block. Ellison had it. But Berkman gets it back. Puts it in. Give him an A for effort. And give the Team 80 a five-point lead. 92-87. Off the mark. It's McSwain. Griffith. Knock loose. But Scooter has it back. And picks the foul. Picks up the foul. 92-89. A three-point advantage. For the 1980 squad. Four minutes and ten seconds to play in the game. And this battle of the champions has indeed become a battle. The red squad, the 86 team, making up a, a big deficit. They were down by 14 at the half. So that's Scooter back at the foul line. Thirteen points for Scooter, ninety three eighty nine. Team 80 leads Team 86 by four. Milt for three.
Griffith has Wiley Brown. Tipped around. Oh, no. It looked like Keith Williams tipped it in. Oh, I don't know who, gonna, who they're going to give it to. Ellison. I don't know. Maybe we give the last one to Wiley. Wiley Brown. 95-91. Team 80 in front by four with 327 to play. Have a break now and a little discussion. Looks like we have well it looks like the 80 champions will inbound the ball. Rodney will toss it in. Keith Williams will try to take on the living legend from Louisville, Daryl Griffith. Griff operates. He's got 35 points. Thompson fouled. Ninety-seven. 91. 3-10 to play here at Freedom Hall. And as the old saying goes, the old cliche, the fans getting uh, their money's worth. Billy T has certainly got not gotten his money's worth from the foul line tonight. He has struggled. Thompson got it. He's got 10, 97, 92. Team 80 in front. Rodney will help take it across the timeline. This is Scooter. Guarded by Kenny Payne. Scooter. They say it's off Payne. 2.53 to go. The 1980 NCAA champions against the 1986 champions. This is Berkman. He'll pull up. Off the front of the rim. This is Kenny Payne. He's got Wagner, but he doesn't see him. He'll go to Thompson on the wing. Thompson it pulls up. Milt. No. Tipped in by Payne. 11 points for Payne. 97. 94. Team 80. They have certainly bent, but they have not broken yet against this younger 86 squad. They've shown a lot of poise here in this fourth quarter. Griffith fouled by Payne. Going in, of course, the 80 team without one of their best players from that uh, year, Derek Smith, who is a free agent, decided not to play. But boy, have they put on a show tonight. So Dr. Duncan Stein, Daryl Griffith now in foul trouble. Number five. Two fifteen to go. Ninety-eight ninety-four. Team eighty by four. Keith Williams at the line for the eighty-six squad. Got it. First point of the game for Williams. A lot of the speculation pregame was that, well, maybe the 80 team will put on a put up a fight for three quarters, but maybe they'll tire out eventually. With 2:15 to go, that is not the story now. 
Williams gets both free throws. The lead is two. Robbie Valentine will come in for the 86 team. Steal by Ellison. Bad pass. He pulls up from three. Bad shot. Two oh five to play. 98-96. Gerald Griffith's team up but by two. He works on Williams. He fakes. No. Robbie Valentine lost it. Wiley has Rodney underneath. Loose ball knocked out of bounds. Steps called. One forty-four to play. Ninety-eight, ninety-six. The red team, the eighty-six champions, with the ball. Valentine pulls up. Air ball might have been tipped. Berkman has got Wiley Brown. Count it. 1896. Timeout. 122 to play. The 80 national champions lead it by four. 120 to go. 196. Team 80 up by four. Team 86 with the ball. This is Keith Williams to Kenny Payne. Payne pops it, kicks out, and Wiley tracks it down. A minute to play. Roger Berkman, scooter, over the head, he's fouled. We'll set the lineups for you. For the national champions from 1980, it's Roger Berkman, Daryl Griffith, Rodney and Scooter, and Wiley Brown. For the Red Squad, the 86 champs, Purvis Ellison, Billy Thompson, Kenny Payne, Milt Wagner, and now Jeff Hall is in for Keith Williams. 55 seconds to go. A four-point advantage for the national champions of 1980. Scooter gets a pair. It's a five-point lead. You no know, Scooter, he's been in the coaching ranks with Denny Crum, but boy, he can still play some round ball. Kicks out. 101-96, five-point lead. Thompson will kick up a three. Kicks off. Hall gets it back. Back to Payne. He'll try the three. No. Billy. Milt will try the tray. No. Loose ball, loose ball foul against the red. 35 seconds to go. The 86 team had their chance that time. Three shots from three-point lane, and that's going to do it for Purvis. He checks out his sixth personal foul, 28 points for Purvis. Mark McSwain checks in for Never Nervous Purvis, who really gave a great effort tonight. Scooter back at the line again. No, kicks off. McSwain has it. 32 seconds to go. The red team needs a tray. They need a three-pointer. Kenny Payne will pop one. No, McSwain. Milt, no. Boy, they're having their bad luck here on the end. Hall will try the three. It's up. No. 16 seconds to go. 13 seconds. Air ball. It looks like the 80 team is going to get this win. Rodney McCray. Five seconds. Four. Three. Berkman throws up a prayer. It's over. the champions has gone to the team from 1980 
Daryl Griffith and company. They win it 101 to 96. Big, big surprise tonight. The old timers beat the younger squad. Five point victory for Team 80. What a game by Griffith. And from the first, the of the 101-96, the Battle of the Champions goes to the team from 1980. Darrell, it looked like it was 1980 all over again tonight for you guys. Well, uh, every time we step on this court, there's a lot of pride involved. And, you know, I said before the game, and all doing the hype of this game, uh, we didn't lose in this building. And uh, we, we plan, plan to keep their record straight. You know, a lot of people, a lot of talk before the game, uh, since you didn't have Derek playing and uh, the other team was much younger, it never showed. It never showed tonight. No, no, it didn't show, but people don't realize we didn't have Scooter when we won it. And Scooter came in and did a hell of a job. We played great, and uh, it was a great game, and uh, I think it's a tribute to the city so they can see a display of two true championship teams in this city. Yeah, it was fun. It, it was, we needed this. We needed to finally settle who's the best, and I still don't believe they're the best, even though they beat us. <laughs> uh, I think you know, anytime you get some competitive guys out there on the floor, it's going to be a tough. Uh, it's going to be a tough game. You know, anytime you step in Freedom Hall, you can't give nothing but 100 percent. The fans deserve it, and the city as well deserves it. Uh, you know, it was so intense out there. It was good to see a lot of old faces, and you know, play against a lot of the younger guys that you watched after you finished. So, you know, to me, I wish we could have this on a yearly thing because uh, you have a lot of fun and you have a, you know, a good workout.